advantage of this is that I have no idea what's on here. So um, uh, we'll see what happens. Let's go to the next slide, which should be a barbecue smoker. Okay, that smell that you smelled coming in is North Carolina barbecue. I was 40 years old and lived in Fairbanks, Alaska before I'd ever heard the term pulled pork because it's barbecue. That's what we called it in North Carolina. I've been eating it since I was a kid, and when I left North Carolina, I learned how to make it. So if you haven't got your ticket for dinner tonight, I hear there's some left. We have uh, eight shoulders of pork for you. Um, it's something that I love doing, and my wife and I entered a barbecue contest, and and we've done it competitively, and now we just do it for others. And so we have a regular barbecue here once a year. The other day, one of my parishioners said, I'm so glad you're here. And I said, well, thank you. And he said, and I'm so glad you're from North Carolina. So uh, next slide. This is one of our typical uh, worship services, if there is such a thing as a typical worship services. The um, pyramids that were uh, here are all made uh, by Angelie Richmond, my wife. Um, she makes stoles to match. We have pyramids, if you go down the hallway uh, towards the bathroom, you'll see a, a sampling of the pyramids that we use during the year. Um, I believe almost all of them are, are handmade um, and are part of our, our worship experience here. So um, my wife loves playing with fabric. We have other people here that love playing with fabric, and so it's a lot of fun. And I never know what's going to happen. I just get dressed in the morning and walk out with what they put on me. Uh, next slide. Should be a stained glass window. Okay. These windows that you see here came with the church in 1927. And as you can imagine, they get a lot of sun. Um, and that destroys the leading in between the windows. So about three years ago, they found out that they were going to have to refurbish all the windows, which meant cleaning it, but also meant redoing the leading and such. So one by one, we've done all of the windows on this side. We we're kind of hoping we don't have to do what we call the Jesus window up there. But that's one of, been one of our big projects. It's been, uh, we have had a capital fundraising grant. And we also got capital fundraising fund. We also uh, got help through the Presbytery with the Barnabas grant for this. And so we are very appreciative of that. But uh, we enjoy the windows in here. Um, I did a sermon series on each of the windows uh, at one point while we were refurbishing them. And that was a lot of fun. Next slide. Uh, jazz is a big part of what we do here. Uh, when I lived in Alaska, I hosted a jazz uh, show for public radio, and every year the Southern Oregon Music Festival has a jazz worship service here with the Midori Brothers, and that's who you're seeing here. Um, and we, it, it's part of, we're one of the venues for what used to be the Southern Oregon Jazz Festival, now Music Festival. Um, we like that so much that we started our own Jazz Vespers, and it's something we started this January. And so the second Sunday of the month, we have local artists that come in, and they play jazz. It's a very light service in many ways. Uh, some of the music secular, some of the music sacred. There's a short little message that we do when we're there. We um, will have anywhere between 100 and 150 people there, only about a quarter of whom are members of our church. And uh, last week I picked up one of the um, recycler papers in town, uh, inter entertainment papers, and lo and behold, there was a letter to the editor about our Jazz Vespers. And this person says, I don't go to any church, but I go there, and the fact that they mention God every once in a while is worth hearing the music. And so <laughs> <clears throat> apparently we're not taking people off, so. Uh, next slide. Children are uh, a part of what we do, although... Um, uh, we don't have a large amount of children in our church. We have the Sarah Corson Center next door, and so you might have uh, driven into the peal uh, of laughter uh, from children. Sarah Corson, we have 15 employees over there, and um, we've been running Sarah Corson now, I, I think, for about eight years, and so um, it's uh, a big part of what we do here. Next slide is some of our members. Um, one is one of our longtime members, and the, the family, it's one of our newest family, the uh, Wilson Heitzes. Uh, and when they came in, everybody said, they have kids. And so um, uh, we have had, I think, like 10 new membership classes in the last three years, and we've been growing. I think we went from about 125. We're almost to 200 now. So we're growing as a congregation and um, we're very excited about that. And what's also exciting is we're growing younger as a congregation, as you can see by this family. Um, 
they're 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 pulling. Although we 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 lost a hundred year member and brought in a twenty seven year old member, so that knocked our median age range down really far. So, uh, next slide. Every year there's a Alba Park across the street, and we do a uh, worship service in the park, and um, uh, invite uh, three two other churches to join us: the United Church of Christ in town, and last year the Episcopal Church joined us for that. And uh, this is doing communion in the park. Uh, the theme of the sermon was the spirituality of the Wizard of Oz. And when I got to Toto, this dog started barking in the background. I, I could not have timed it better. So, uh, and that's uh, the, over there is Julie Tom, who works with our Wednesday Night Live program. It's our program for youth. Some of the kids come from our church here. Uh, some of the kids are clients of our food bank. And some of the kids are in the residential drug and, and alcohol treatment house down the street. So we are the youth group for the Residential Drug and Alcohol Treatment Center, as well as uh, children of clients of our food bank and our own as well. Next slide is a member, some, one of you might recognize, Vera Morell and her husband, Frank. And beside them are deacons in our church uh, that reach out and help with receptions for funerals and marriages and uh, try to keep up with our church members. Um, next slide. One of the biggest ministries that we have here is our food project and uh, our food bank. Every Wednesday, we turn that fellowship hall where you ate into a grocery store. And all those tables are filled with food that we buy through Access Alaska. Part of it's donated through Trader Joe's. And instead of giving people a, a food box, uh, what we will do is give them grocery carts and they go shopping. And so they'll use what they want. They get to choose what they want, and we help them uh, take them out to the cars for them. Um, and uh, tri when Trader Joe's started doing it, they started giving us flowers. And uh, as one person was leaving, one of our members gave this woman some flowers, and she just stopped and just started crying. And, um, and she said, no one's ever given me flowers before. When I first got here, uh, a normal day for our food bank would be about 20 members. A big day would be 25 families. We're up to uh, a big day for us now is 60 to 70 families, and 20 is a low day for us now. Um, the other thing that we do is, uh, uh, if you'll go to the next slide, um, you can see the tables for the food bank. And then we also, when I first got here, we would give away occasional bag lunches to people. And it started taking off. Um, we do one or two a month, and that turned into one or two a week. And... Uh, two weeks ago, we did 176 bag lunches for people in our community that knock on the door. There's, the only requirement is you have to physically be here to get a lunch. And uh, so we, you can't take several lunches for other people, but uh, we don't do any intake or anything like that. And, and um, we started doing it in such a way that it's, it's just taken off, and now we've got to figure out how to fund it. So um, you start something good, and then boom, there it goes. And so... Um, Last week was a low week. I think we only gave out 70 lunches. Um, but it's, it's everything from the people at the uh, rehab center next door who are on break and, and they don't have money for food. Uh, food insecurity is a major problem here in Medford. Uh, a lot of people work minimum wage, and they have enough for rent or they have enough for food. They're not starving. But uh, Next slide. Uh, some of our famous people. Uh, the uh, Mike Hubbard at General Assembly on the big screen. So, and um, uh, Hugh and Tina Anderson, who recently came back from China as missionaries, a part of this congregation. And you'll hear more from Hugh uh, 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 tonight. He'll be preaching for us. And last slide, uh, two of our members, uh, uh, Phoenix and, and Abby, and uh, signed for our church. We're excited uh, about the growth that's been occurring here. We are a downtown church. We have all the problems. If you tried to park today, you know all of the problems that come with being a downtown church. You notice the people at the front uh, running interference because we never know who's going to come in and what they're going to bring. Um, some people just want something. Some people are mentally ill. Some people are angry at God. Some people want to talk to God. We do get a lot of street traffic here, and we, we, it's an important part of what we do. Uh, we love being a downtown church. The reason I came to this church four years ago is this church said we want to be a downtown church. And I love the congregation here. They're doing that well. And so covet your prayers. And uh, it's an exciting time to be a part of this congregation. Can we pray for you? 
I'm trapped. You have to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so as I place my hand, Marie, would you also in body or spirit raise your hand as a sign of prayer for this community? God, we thank you for this community downtown in Medford, for all they are doing to feed the hungry, to equip their members to serve their passions and callings in this world, for the people that are coming in here to listen to music and hearing a little bit about God in the process. I pray that you'd continue to give them courage and empower them with your spirit, that Murray, as the pastor, would feel encouraged and have the wisdom he needs to lead this congregation and that you would guide them into what you are doing here in Medford. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.